You may recall this video from a few months back. Intel Old Lake is breaking Linux webcam support. But just in case you don't, a lot of these new Intel Old Lake laptops started shipping a new kind of webcam module, a MIPI IPU6 camera. Now, that's totally fine. New cameras are great. The issue is that they didn't work on Linux because they didn't hook into the existing Linux webcam stack. And not only did they not hook into the existing webcam stack, Intel had not upstreamed a driver. So out of the box, they would not function. Now, the reason why they didn't hook into the existing stack is a lot of the stuff that used to be done in firmware, like the autofocus, the AI enhancement, the auto exposure, things like that, we're not in the firmware anymore. Now they're being done in user space. In Lenovo's case and a few other cases, these will be marketed as a computer vision camera, but a lot of other laptops just made no mention of them whatsoever. At the time, Greg Crawl Hartman said, don't buy these devices if the vendor is not willing to get their drivers upstream properly. And drivers are totally available. Intel is pretty good at supporting the open source space. The problem is the drivers are not suitable for the upstream kernel because they don't even consistently support all of the OEM devices. Now, sadly, there's been no change in getting the drivers upstreamed. They are still out of tree modules. They need to be loaded through DKMS, which is annoying, but no worse than what NVIDIA makes you do. But there has been some work done to make these drivers play a little bit nicer. And like a lot of the good things that happen on Linux, it's being done by a Red Hat engineer, Hans de Gode, which I probably completely butchered. Hi all, here is a small set of patches to make the int 3472, which is a Intel power controller driver, slash discrete code, work with the sensor drivers bundled with the unfortunately out of tree IPU6 driver. There are parts of the out of tree IPU6 code, like the sensor drivers, which can be moved to the main line, and I do plan to work on this at some point, and then some of this might need to change. But for now, the goal is to make the out of tree driver work with the standard mainline distro kernels through DKMS, otherwise, users need to run a patch kernel just for a couple of small differences. I didn't mention that. Not only do you need to use DKMS, you need to patch the kernel. In my original video, I don't think I mentioned this, but doing this is really, really annoying. Not that patching the kernel is hard, but the fact that it just doesn't work with a mainline kernel. And on something like Ubuntu, that's not that big of a deal. But if you're trying to do this on a rolling release and you want to have an up-to-date kernel, well... <laughs> Good luck! You're gonna have to patch the kernel constantly, and sometimes this patch might not work because the patch is always made for a couple of releases behind. But as for Hans's patch set, it's not just redoing everything from scratch. It's taking Intel's existing patch and then rewriting it to be more in line with what makes sense in the kernel and fixing a couple of its really weird bugs. This rewrite makes two significant changes. It doesn't break things on IPU3 platforms. Now, IPU3 is an older camera format that a lot of devices still use. And if this patch breaks these older cameras, it's not really that big of a deal. Your device only has an IPU6 camera. Doesn't matter if IPU3 doesn't work, but you can't make that assumption inside of the mainline kernel. And then the second thing is basically just changing the way the properties of the devices are actually being matched. But while this patch set seems like a pretty simple thing to bring in, Laurent Pinchart isn't exactly a big fan of some aspects of it. Hi Hans, thank you for the patch. I don't like this idea much. I see this as opening the door to other hacks in mainline just for the purpose of supporting Alder Tree drivers. That's not how we should operate upstream. Why can't we patch the out of tree drivers to use the clock framework, given that's what we'll need to do in mainline, that shouldn't be too intrusive of a change. With the clock framework being this, the common CLK framework. The common CLK framework is an interface to control the clock nodes available on various devices today. This may come in the form of clock gating, rate adjustments, muxing, or other operations. This framework is enabled with the config common CLK option. And from what I can see as someone who is not at all a kernel dev, this seems to be the standard way of handling things like this.
Now, Hans wasn't exactly sure on how to handle the privacy LED, saying maybe we should patch the sensor drivers for sensor supported with the IPU3 to also expect the privacy LED to always be a separate GPIO, a general purpose input output. This way we can also avoid the camera LED briefly going on at boot when the driver is powering things up to read the sensor's ID register. And Lawrence said, to fix the privacy LED flickering problem correctly, we need to avoid powering up the sensor at probe time, so when the driver is being started. As there are hardware designs that wire the privacy LED to the sensor power rails without any way to disable it in software. This is a security feature so that, you know, if someone hacks your device and accesses your webcam, the privacy LED is always going to be turned on and there's no way to disable that in software. Now besides these comments, for a kernel patch set there's not really that much in the way of critical feedback, which is kind of rare to be honest. A lot of the patch sets we've seen is like giant threads, people going over every little thing. Here, because Intel already wrote the patch, the patches were pretty much good anyway, there's not major functionality that really needs to be dealt with. So, merging this isn't going to completely deal with the problem, but it is going to make it a little bit more sensible to get these cameras working. So, right now, it's probably still best avoiding these webcams, but if you do want to stay up to date on what's actually happening, probably the best places to do that are on places like the Lenovo forums and the Arch Linux forums. So these are pretty much the two biggest threads on these Intel IPU6 nonsense cameras. And the problem is the solutions on one device like the X1 Carbon here may not work on a Dell XPS, may not work on another device, may not work on another device. And it's kind of all a mess. At least with the Dell XPS, with the developer edition, the Ubuntu version, it actually does work out of the box. Dell has actually made it work. They've got everything set up for you. But if you want to set stuff up yourself, you're basically out of luck and go have fun digging through forum posts and trying to piece it together for your device. So when it comes to proper Intel support, we're pretty much at where we left off in August. I can confirm the IPU6 driver upstreaming is now planned, with IPU6 input system driver to be upstreamed first. The intent is that we would have these patches for review on the Linux mailing list around the end of the year. The processing system driver will need more work to replace the custom interface for a fully functional camera stack, also lib camera support for IPU6 will be needed. I think I can say a major factor for why we're here is the original intent was to use a different interface for upstream, but as we don't have one yet, and probably won't for quite some time, this doesn't really seem like a viable option anymore. So I'm afraid I can't promise a quick fix, but at the same time, I can say work is being done to address this. And considering they say the end of the year, the end of the year is pretty soon. So, I don't know, are they going to release it on Christmas? Maybe. I don't think so though. I think it's probably going to be sometime next year where these devices are actually usable. So did you make the mistake of buying these ThinkPads, these XPS devices or any of these other affected devices and realize your camera doesn't work? Or have you been waiting to buy one? Maybe you just don't need a new laptop and you're like, ha ha, funny people buying new devices, everything breaking. Don't buy new devices. This is my recommendation. Never buy current gen. Always buy a generation behind things will usually work properly by that point. Anyway, if you like this video, remember to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, send our bearer pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.